I was assigned to a very ho high profile client in the office and I was excited about it as, as most new senior associates are. You get a new client, it's high profile, everybody says you're on XYZ engagement, yeah, sure, I'm really happy to do that. This public company was um, well thought of by the capital markets. They were uh, listed on the NASDAQ, uh, the media loved them. They were a high flyer and that's uh, essentially why they were a high profile client of the, uh, of the office. Fraud was absolutely the furthest thing from my mind. I never thought that uh, fraud would happen on one of my audits. I never thought that someone would deceive me. I actually thought that if I did run into a deceptive person, I could figure it out and deal with it appropriately. This was a company that was in the uh, alarm servicing business, Central Station Alarm. They would sell an alarm system to a business or a residential a home and uh, install the unit and then bill them uh, eighty, ninety dollars a month. Now the company accounted for that transaction under SFAS 13, accounting for sales type leases, where they would capitalize the stream of income, present value it, and record it as an asset at the time they signed the contract. Now they had about 15,000 leases on the books at the time we did this audit, which was our, actually our third audit cycle. And that asset, that net asset, what's called lease contracts receivable. Uh, I was in charge of auditing it, and you can think of it in terms of an accounts receivable. You circularize the file, you select, uh, I think we selected about 600 uh, for positive confirmation, and I had sent out all those confirmations and got them back, and virtually there were, there were no exceptions. Uh, we were about a couple of weeks from wrapping up the audit and then earnings release for the company was a couple of weeks after that. And I was having a conversation with the accounting clerk and I noticed a file on her desk. It had complaint file written on it. It was about an inch thick and it just said complaint file. I took it back to my desk and I started to peruse it. And what I found was absolutely alarming. Uh, there were what I would call hate letters uh, to the company written by customers saying your equipment is inferior or your service is terrible, I want to cancel my contract, come get your equipment. And there were over a hundred of these letters. So I selected five of the letters out of the file. I ended up calling all five customers and here's what I was looking at. I was looking at a letter from a customer dated uh, prior to 1231 that says take out my alarm system. Yet that asset was still listed on the books and records of the company at the end of the year. So then I thought, okay, there must be some reserve, some adjustment of some kind. I went through the reconciliation of the subsidiary ledger to the control account and onto the financial statements. There was no such reserve or adjustment of any kind. Those five uh, assets that should have been taken off the books were in fact included on the company's 1231 financial statements at year end. What I decided to do was to reperform the confirmation process. 8.30 in the morning, I'm still there going through manual accounting. By that time, the company's employees were coming. Our audit crew was coming back. I don't think anybody had noticed I hadn't gone home to change. But at that time, I had accumulated uh, seven of these exceptions. Now I feel like I've got a problem. So I went to the IT uh, coordinator with the seven names, and I said, please print out the electronic file that you have in the customer file for every one of these seven customers, bring it back to me. I said, sure, no problem. So he brings it back to me. It actually has all the same information uh, that the LCR subsidiary ledger has, except it has one additional column. There is a Z in every single row. So I asked the IT director to run a query on the entire 15,000 lease master file and I'm amazed as I flip through page after page after page of all of these customers with a Z in the far hand corner. There are about 4,000 customers out of a total file of 15,000 leases. We ended up withdrawing from the client for that third year audit. We never issued an audit opinion. We withdrew all our previous audit opinions and we notified the SEC. Obviously, shortly after that, when you do that on a public company, SEC enforcement becomes very interested in what's going on. The subpoenas started flying uh, for persons and documents, and uh, I was uh, 
I ended up becoming their lead witness in their investigation against my own firm and the client. The CFO of the company was a former manager at my own firm. I knew him. He was the best friend of the then manager uh, on the account. And it was very troubling because I had been deceived by someone I trusted. And it completely changed my entire perspective of what professional skepticism really meant to me as an auditor. And it was really at that time when I decided to trust my client, sure, but to verify as well. Do I believe that auditors today can find more fraud? Absolutely. But they have to believe two things. First, they have to believe that fraud can happen on their clients and go undetected. And secondly, they have to believe this, and this is really a message to the seniors and the associates. They have to believe that their job is incredibly important. If they don't find fraud on their audits, it probably won't get caught.